Hi guys, my name is Carla. I am forever jet lagged and welcome back to my channel. As promised, in today's episode, I'm bringing you part two of cabin crew slang. This is a list of words that cabin crew use. I noticed that regular people don't really know what these words mean. So I decided to explain some of them in case you are just curious or in case you are on your path to becoming cabin crew. This is some words that you should know. If you haven't watched part one of cabin crew slang, it's right here in the corner. Go watch it and let me know what you think. Now let's get started with part two. My name is Carla, I am from Romania and I used to work for Emirates Airlines for four years. When COVID started I stopped, but Emirates was one of the best decisions I ever made and I am forever grateful for having the opportunity to see the world and learn so many things from many cultures. If it's something you are thinking to do, my advice is go for it. It's an amazing experience, it's gonna open your horizons and is gonna teach you a lot of things. Now let's talk about cabin crew slang. Last week I talked about roster, about bidding, swaps, how your schedule is gonna be. This week I'm gonna talk a little bit more about words that we use on the actual flight and a few extra ones. The first word that I wanna start with is iCrew or the new version Crew Pulse. Krupos is the app where you can see your schedule. This is an app that Emirates puts on your phone. They will help you download it and install it. It used to be called iCrew, now it's called Krupos. So if you hear people still using the iCrew word, they mean Krupos. Like I said, it's an app where you see, you get to see your schedule, you get to see each flight, the flight details, what time are you gonna take off, what time are you gonna land, who are you flying with, who's gonna be your captain and first officer, your purser, all your colleagues. They also have this feature that you can check other people's rosters. So if you have a friend and you wanna know when you're gonna have days off in Dubai together to be able to meet, you can check there. Of course, there's another feature where you can put your schedule on private. It's pretty much like Instagram when you put your account on private or public. These are the main features of the Krupos app. You can see your schedule, you can see other people's schedules, you can see your flight details, you can also see the load of the flight, if it's going to be a full flight, if it's going to be an empty flight. These details only appear before the flight, a few hours before the flight, but yes, you can check those. So this is Krupos or how it used to be iCrew. And staying on the subject of your schedule, Again, last week I talked about swaps and that there is some rules that you need to follow in order for your swap to be approved. These rules are called legalities and you will hear this a lot. There is a legality of how many male crew there need to be on the flight. There is a legality about language speaker and I talked about this last week. There is a lot, a lot of legalities. And don't worry, you don't need to know them by heart. Some of them you will remember them because they are the most common, but there are a lot, a lot of other legalities that are a bit complicated to understand. They have to do with your rest time. They have to do with how many days off are you allowed to have in a month or how many flying hours are you allowed to have in a month or if you've been to a western destination and you want to go to an eastern destination there is a lot of this type of legalities that again you don't have to know them by heart you will bump into them don't worry nothing happens just your swap might get rejected and you have to try again with a different person or with a different flight now moving a little bit to training college the two months in training college is a lot of information you will learn a lot, you will have to study, you will have exams, it's intense. The one word that I believe I heard the most in training college, it's actually an abbreviation. 
It's SOP. For everything that happens on board, you have an SOP. SOP comes from Standard Operating Procedure. So for anything that happens on board that has to do with service, that has to do with security, safety, it doesn't matter, medical cases, for everything you have an SOP and you need to follow it. So this is the hard part that you need to study. You need to know most of your SOPs. For example, if the smoke alarm activates in a bathroom, what are you supposed to do? How do you check it? How do you, do you open the door? Do you not open the door? What exactly do you need to do? All these things are called SOPs, Standard Operating Procedures. So in a standard situation, what do you need to do? This is a bit difficult because you do need to know them, but also on board you have a manual. So in case anything happens, you also have a manual that you can refer to and you can check. You have that option if you need it. And now moving on to the service part of your flight, Emirates offers special meals. So the passengers, they have the opportunity to reserve or to request a special meal 24 hours before the flight. If they don't do it 24 hours before the flight, their meal is not going to be on board. Sometimes you can do something about it. Maybe you have an extra one. Maybe, I don't know, you can get it from business class. Most of the times, if they haven't ordered it 24 hours before, there's nothing you can do about it. These special meals, they all have, again, abbreviations. For example, before every flight, you have stickers that you need to put on these trays for special meals. The most common meals are obviously the child meal, which comes for every single child on the flight. And you will see a sticker that has CHML. So all of them, they have the first two letters, which is the actual meal, and the last two letters that are ML, comes from meal. You will have CHML, which is child meal. You will have AVML, which is Asian vegetarian meal. You will have VGML, which is vegan meal, and a lot of other options. You have to be very careful because sometimes People request these meals for dietary requirements, they have allergies. You really have to be careful to read the stickers correctly and put the stickers on the appropriate tray because otherwise it's gonna be a mess. These abbreviations, they, they seem a, a little bit complicated in the beginning. You will get mixed because it's not just three, it's about seven or eight, but in time you'll get used to them. And the responsibility for the special meals it's usually the CSB, it's your senior. Once you have the confidence to do it, you can also do it. You can put the stickers, it's all good. But in the beginning, you're not going to have this responsibility. So don't worry about it. And speaking of meals and what happens on board, there is three main areas on an aircraft. There is the cabin, there is the kitchen, and there are the bathrooms. These are the three main areas that passengers have access to on board the aircraft. The cabin is called the cabin, but the bathroom and the kitchen, they have different names on board the aircraft and the crew only use these words. You will never hear a cabin crew saying, I'm going to the kitchen or I'm going to the bathroom on board the aircraft. It's always other two words. The kitchen is called the galley. Before I joined Emirates, I had no idea what this word means. I learned it very fast. Before I was a cabin crew, I didn't even know the word galley exists. So when you hear someone say galley, they mean the kitchen on board the aircraft. And then the bathroom as well. Passengers still call it the bathroom. Cabin crew will never call it a bathroom. Everybody calls it a lavatory. And again, this is another word that I had no idea existed before I joined Emirates. That's why I decided to mention these two words because they are very common within the cabin crew community. I don't know why they're not, they're not used in everyday life. So the lavatory is the bathroom and the galley is the kitchen on board the aircraft. And speaking of the galley, there is something called Galley wow. FM. Galley FM is a joke between cabin crew. You will hear so many stories in the galley. When it's a long flight, when it's a night flight, everybody's sleeping, you don't have much to do, you already finished your service, you finished everything you had to do. Everybody goes to the galley, and you can have a coffee, you can talk to your colleagues, you can eat something, you have a little bit of a break. In this time, you will talk to your colleagues and you will hear a lot of stories. Galley FM refers mostly to gossip. 
It happened to me so many times that I heard the same story with different details from different people. It's basically a live radio station on board the aircraft where you hear all the gossip within the crew community. My advice is don't believe all these stories. People really like to be dramatic, sometimes invent stories so they seem cool or I don't know the reason. Don't listen to everything you hear in the galley. The gossip can be fun to hear sometimes, but take it as a gossip and nothing more. Moving on, since I talked about seniors and the purser, there is a thing called My Flight Performance. It used to be called a flight review, but they changed the name and now it's called My Flight Performance. You have one every month. What this means is that your senior has to shadow you has to check how you deliver the service, how you are with the customers. It's basically, like the name says, a review of you on that flight. So on that flight, you will be watched a little bit more. You will be maybe asked questions by your senior. It's nothing to worry about. The seniors are most of them very nice. As long as you just do your job with a smile on your face and you are genuinely nice to the customers, to the passengers, then you have nothing to worry about. This flight review, like I said, it's only once a month and you will be notified before the flight. Me, I never worried about it because I acted the same on every flight. I never did anything extra when I had my flight performance or anything less when I didn't have it. I always behaved the same way and I never got in trouble. So it's nothing to worry about. It's just something that you should be mindful of and take it into account that you will have this flight performance once a month. And last but not least, everybody thinks that cabin crew fly for free. Yes, you do fly for free when you're working and you do get to travel for free when you're working. However, when you want to go on holiday, you will have to pay for your flight. It's true you have discounts. This is what I'm, I want to talk about because these discounts also have codes and also have abbreviations. Everything in aviation is about a code or an abbreviation. There is two main types of tickets that you can buy as cabin crew. There is ID90 and ID50. ID90 is the cheaper version of a ticket. You have a bigger discount on this ticket. However, it is not a confirmed ticket. You will be on standby. You have to go to the airport when you book this ticket and they will tell you to wait until the check-in is closed or almost closed. And what happens is when the check-in is finished, they see that if they have an empty space on the flight or not. If they have an empty space, they will give you your boarding pass and then you have to run through the airport to make it to your gate. This is not an ideal ticket, but it helps a lot. So you travel cheap. It's just that you are not sure if you're gonna travel or not. And then you have ID 50. ID 50 is a confirmed ticket. However, it's a little bit more expensive. So the discount is less, but you have a confirmed ticket. What cabin crew do is they use the ID 50s only when they really need to reach a destination on a certain date. And then the last type of ticket is the friends tickets or special tickets. These tickets are similar to the ID 50. They are confirmed, but they are for your friends and family. Emirates keeps uh, changing this. Now, I believe it changed again. It's available for anyone you want, so friends and family. The only issue with all these tickets is that they need to be on an Emirates flight and they need to go through Dubai. So it can be a flight that leaves from Dubai to a certain destination or, or from a certain destination to Dubai, but it has to be on Emirates. This is it about the tickets. Cabin crew don't fly for free unless they're working. When you go on holiday, you do have to pay something for that ticket. It's true that you have good discounts. Sometimes you even have discounts with other airlines that Emirates have, has partnerships with. These discounts are available only for you, not your friends or family, but it's good to have them. We have reached the end of our part two of cabin crew slang. If there is any words that you maybe didn't understand what they mean, please leave them in the comments and I will make sure to explain better. 
Also, if there's any words that I didn't mention and you're curious to know what they mean, again, leave them in the comments and I will explain. Share this video with your friends, with someone who maybe wants to be cabin crew, someone who is curious about cabin crew. Share it with whoever might find it interesting. Like this video, subscribe to my channel so you can see all my previous and my new videos. Next week, I'm gonna come back with a Q&A. So stay tuned for that. I'll see you soon. Bye.